Welcome to Getting to the Truth in This Art. I am your host, Rob Lee. And today, my guest is the co-anchor of WBAL-TV Channel 11 News. Today, uh, we have Jason Newton. Welcome to the podcast. Hey, man, I appreciate it. I'm just warning you right now. You know, it's it's getting late in my time, like 10 o'clock. I'm bound to say anything right now. I've been up <laughs> since 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh, wow. You're, you're a wild man. You're a wild man out here. <laughs> I, I see people, when they get up, they do their morning practice. And I'll see, like, guys I know, artists I know, people in the scene that I know. And they're like, yeah, I've been up since 4. It's like, when do you sleep? <laughs> it, trust me, man. It is it is such a struggle to keep it consistent. I always say that, at least for me on this ship, it's just, if I'm just in the bedroom by seven o'clock, I'll be, I know that I'll have a decent day, but I have, you know, I have a 14 year old, a 12 year old and a cat running around the house and, you know, parents calling. So, I mean, it's just, it, it is rare that I'm actually up there by seven o'clock, but when, you know, when I hit the sweet spot, it's a great night's sleep. Uh, that may be once a week. <laughs> I, I thought I was going to have like a super early, like in bed sleep situation yesterday. And I found myself, I was in bed at like six 30. Right. And Man. I find myself like at 11, still watching like old WWE matches from like 1988, <laughs> eating like Fritos. I was like, yeah, what if, what if I become? <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's me too, man. For me, it's, it's either like Wordle or it's, a, um, you know, some kind of puzzle or, you know, you go down some rabbit hole, you search one thing on Google that's led to 17 other things. And then, you know, I may have been in the room at seven, but it's yeah. nine o'clock and I'm sitting there like, oh, okay, so I squandered two hours of <laughs> getting to bed on time. So yeah, it is, it is, that's the hardest part. The getting up part is easy. I mean, the alarm clock goes off. Yeah. I gotta be to work on time, but it's convincing myself at night to call it quits. Um, and that is, that is a task. I dig it. I dig it. Um, so for the fine folks that don't know, and I don't know what's happening, but give us the vital stats, your background and like what interested you in like a career in broadcast journalism. Uh, I had zero interest in this career. Uh, I mean, when I say zero, I had, I knew nothing about it, knew nobody in it. Um, people are probably sick of hearing the story. I, um, so I went to university of Maryland because I knew that forever I was going to be a pediatrician. There was no doubt about it. There was no questions asked. I didn't research anything else. I didn't ask any other questions. I had done an internship at Union, Union Memorial, uh, in the pediatric clinic for a while. And then I had a, a cousin who's, uh, her father was a doctor. So I was lining things up with him. Yeah. Uh, and then I got to university of Maryland and I took, uh, I was taking all biology classes. I took this class, organic chemistry, which is, it's a bear, man. It's like creating things with molecules. You learn how to do all the bonds and this bonds and that, blah, 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 which you know, on the surface was easy that first time. <laughs> then the second time I took it, I was like, okay, let me just pick up on things. They would give me study tips and put stuff on the wall. And, draw. and I, was, I did that in my room. My room had nothing but flashcards on it. Then the third time I took organic chemistry, I was like, okay, I think there's something to me not taking this class anymore. Uh, I mean, when the, you know, when the professor starts to notice you by name in a, in a classroom, it's a university of Maryland classroom, it's like hundreds of people. Yeah. I'm like, okay, he should know my name. Uh, so, so I, uh, you know, you, you do some soul searching. My father worked on campus at the time and he was, he was an administrator before he retired. And so he knew my grades, like he knew how poorly I was doing, but, what I'm grateful for is that he never said anything, mm -hmm. never said, he never called me to the carpet, never said, because I was an adult at that point and I had to figure it out. Now, when I did eventually find uh, the major that was fit for me, uh, we did have that conversation, but he let me sort of, you know, choose my own adventure and, and <laughs> work my way out of it. Um, and I found really good people in the college of journalism. Um, yeah. yes, part of it was that my credits lined up, but B, I knew that I was curious, a curious person. Uh, I remember here in Baltimore names, you, you're probably too young to know, but like Al Sanders, and Jerry Turner, uh, John Buren, and these all on Channel 13, and Rod Daniels, and Santo, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I knew I, I knew I appreciated their work, and I admired them as people. Uh, and I just thought, you know, one thing after another happened. Um, so from University of Maryland, I had a job in Salisbury at WBOC, so I worked there. Yeah. Um, I had no idea what I was getting myself into, but figured it out after six years of doing it. Um, a brief stop at UMES for a semester as we figured out what the heck came next. Yeah. Uh, and then went to Milwaukee and worked there for about seven years. Um, and then back home. And I mean, you know, it's I'd be lying if I told you I perfected it because I have not. <laughs> I steal from people that I admire every day. 
Uh, I figure out new ways to do things every day. Um, there are days where I'm like, I did not get it right. And there are other days I'm like, oh, all right, let's go ahead and hold on to that thing. So listen, yeah. I'm, I'm prepared to learn for the next 30 years or so. Um, and that's fun to me. Uh, if yeah. I wasn't, then I, I know I'm in the wrong place. And I think I think that's important to find a spot where you're perpetually like interested in wanting to learn, like no doubt. in in the, the the job that I have in the day daytime, and even doing the podcast stuff. You're always learning something new and being in these different cohorts. I, yeah. I would describe myself as I'm an audio nerd. I'm an audiophile by nature, <laughs> so it's just like, all right, how do I do that? Oh, I can do that with my voice. Yeah. Cool. And, yeah, and um, Robin, you know what? Yeah. And also, like, it's all, not even just learning, but it's just being happy, man. Like, yeah. I mean, why show up for eight hours? Why spend eight hours of your day <laughs> miserable? Yeah. Um, and I say that to a lot of the high school kids. Like, oh, so like, you choose something you'll be happy with that you go in. And listen, every day's not going to be perfect, no. um, obviously. But if you can just come in and find bits of it that you're happy with within that eight hours for the majority of the eight hours, yeah. um, you've done yourself a service. But if you're just going to do it for the paycheck, or you're just going to do it because it looks good, what's the use? I mean, what do you have to show for it? Yeah, I mean, and you don't want these kind of like adversarial things, right? Like, I, I, no, I, I, I talk about it with my, my with my girlfriend all the time. I was like, we don't have an adversarial relationship. And I think <laughs> it, it, it extends, right? Where you don't want to yeah. have an adversarial relationship with yourself. Like, I'm, why am I doing this? How did I put myself in this spot? And you're like hating it. Right. It's like, no, you have to elicit joy from it. And to your point, it's not always going to be perfect. It's not always going to be gold. Once you get back on a horse and you keep keep riding. Right. And that's part of the challenge, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you get knocked off the horse and it's, you know, it's a bad, it's a bad day. Like you go home and you're just, but you, at least for me, I'll sit and stew about that for that night to figure out how mm -hmm. to fix it. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a Facebook live today and the video was uh, vertical instead of horizontal. I had no idea until someone told me it was happening. <laughs> and I'll tell, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to be thinking about that until the next time we do it. Mm -hmm. um, only because I wanted to be, you know, you wanted to be right. You want to be perfect. Now, am I going to sit home and cry about it and, you know, yeah. have a beer about it? No, but I will, um, I'll be thinking about, all right, so here's a way to do it um, better the next time. And in fact, we already, we just talked about it a second ago. Um, because yeah, you don't want, you, uh, you sort of want to outwork if it's not where I work yourself, I'll work the next person a little bit. I mean, that, that's my fun of it. You know, you know, that's, that's my opponent. Um, and so I, you know, I don't know. I just like the challenge. I dig it. So we, we, we have that overlap, right? Uh, we have a few overlaps, yeah. but we have an overlap. Uh, so yeah, thinking yeah. back to your time at city college and growing up in Baltimore, are there any lessons that you learned from, from here, from home, whether it be college, high school, this, this whole, you know, background that, kind of stayed with you it may not be academic, but something that stayed with you that you apply to like your, your, your day to day now. Uh, yeah, I would think that high school, um, if you want to talk about that connection was, and I don't know if it's the same thing for you, but for me is where I sort of came out of my shell. I'm naturally an introvert. I will choose alone before I choose a group, you know what Always. I'm saying? If, if, Always. If, the, if, the, if there's the invitation to go to a group of, you know, pre COVID, of course, a group of 30 people sitting around doing whatever, I will opt for watching a movie in the basement uh, and be just fine, <laughs> be fine with it. But, but what I think what that did for me in those years to, was to understand the value of not always just being the loner, you know what I'm saying? Or, or, or choosing being introverted. And I think that it, it, it forced you to understand that people live differently sure. and you can see how, you know, Oh, this is how you do it at your house. Or that's how you do it at house. Or to accept, Oh, this is how, you know, your religion accepts this. Or, you, you know, you, you, um, your, your folks don't have a car, so you catch the bus. Or your folks do have a car, you've never caught the bus before. Like, it, it, it helped me to, um, I guess, be more well-rounded, say. Yeah. Um, and then you grow up a lot there, I thought, you know, because that's where I think freedom started to begin. Um, and there are a lot of things that, shoot, that I did that maybe my parents don't even know that I've done. You know, you would catch the bus down to Inner Harbor on, on early release days. <laughs> um, and so it was beginning to trust yourself. Um, but I think overall, I guess in those years, if you talk about a lesson that I took from home, I guess I've always watched my parents treat people well. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, I've never seen my parents yell at somebody. Uh, I mean, of course, we get in the car, we might, you know, talk about somebody after, after an event has happened. But they've yeah. always, no one has ever come in my house. My father hasn't offered them something right. or no one has ever been around my folks and been without um, without them saying, this is what you need. But like, I've seen my mother go <laughs> back in the day. I should go to the ATM and just, Oh, you need some money. And I go, like, oh, it was that easy for me. You get, you gave them, <laughs> you gave I had them chores. <laughs> right. I had to earn mine. Um, but I think that if, if there's a lesson from them, it's just that they've always 
have treated people well and fair. And that has always stayed with me. Um, and how easy it is to do. And you're like, man, why doesn't, why does this work for everybody? <laughs> um, right. but I think if there's something from them not taken, that's, that's it. Yeah, that's 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 really important. And definitely echo that sentiment of uh, around city or what have you being there. I, I felt like, you know, learned diversity, you learned to like kind of this passive uh, competitive thing where it's like everyone here yeah. is smart. I'm not the, the smart guy in the class, per se. There's like right. 10 of us in here that are like super smart and um, feeling that kind of um, competitive thing. And, mm-hmm. you know, looking like an athlete because, you know, six, four, like a three hundo at the time. So I'm just like, right. it's like, why aren't you playing left tackle? It's like, look, I like to write. Right. I like to write poetry. <laughs> and that's literally what I did. You know, shout out to Night right, Riders right, right. And, um, and and just kind of having that that air of tradition, but also recognizing like diversity and just seeing like just different things. That was the initial exposure. So in going to to college, I kind of missed that because the college I went to didn't have that. And so I felt like I got the oh, okay. social college experience at city versus at actual college. That's, that's no what doubt. I'm yeah. Same thing. Yeah. I think that I think most of the social interaction that I remember most probably happened at city. Um, rather than Maryland. It's funny you said early, the, what you were saying earlier about the competitive nature. You walked into high school. And of course, I mean, as a kid, you think that you, you think of high school as, you know, you're growing up, but you're not. But, but you, you're you like, oh, I'm the smart one. And then like four, five, <laughs> ten other people are smarter than you. You're like, mm-hmm. oh, no. Like, but the, the jig is up. <laughs> I'm looking over my I shoulder like, the textbook now. <laughs> yeah, and I have one of those memories where it's like, I, I'm i in the class. I have perfect attendance. I remember everything. Right. And looking over right. my shoulder, it's like, how did you come up with that? Why do you know more right. than me? <laughs> or, or you're like, oh, I'm a good person, so how could I fail? And then, then you get your progress report and like, oh, that's how I could fail. Okay. that's right. Oh, that's that 38 right there I ordered. Got it. Uh, <laughs> so w- what is it like being a Baltimore native while covering Baltimore and are there like instances where like hometown pride kind of gets in there and you may second guess a story, you may <laughs> second guess how you uh, approach a story or present a story? Well, I mean, I think it's, it's definitely different from the experience I had in Milwaukee. I mean, you know, it's, it, it's different when you know how to say I can try terrorist or you knew what a chicken box is, or, you know, or you, you knew what school was in the County, what school was in the city. Um, I don't know. Like it, it, there's something about, the insider knowledge of it, but then you're also sympathetic to what some neighborhoods have been through. Uh, you know, who may go to the Preakness and see Park Heights um, mm-hmm. has this, I think, a first glance um, thought of what that neighborhood is like, or, or question why it's there, uh, but don't understand the the history went, that went along with it being there. You know, I remember I was, <laughs> I remember being in the newsroom and the person will remain nameless. I remember them saying there's a story at a high school and the guy said something like, Oh, it's at such and such high school. And he said under his breath, like, Oh, right. Yeah. That's uh, going there. Uh, what is it? Yeah. They're pretty much just babysitters there. And he saw my head pop up and he knew that was from Baltimore <laughs> and he suddenly changes too. Um, <laughs> because like, you know, you, I mean, regardless, you know, good, bad or indifferent, like you still, um, you still have respect for the place where you're brought up. Um, and, um, you always will, even at the worst of times, um, I always will have a glass half full for Baltimore. I mean, we're going through a a rough time right now. Uh, I mean, if it's bad, it's going on right now, but I'm pretty glass half full that it can't always say bad. And I know there are good people here that I think will work to change things. I don't know if someone, if an outsider feel bad. I remember when I was going first in this job, a guy said to me, uh, I was still, I don't know if I was in Milwaukee, but I mean, it was someone not from Baltimore. He says to me, uh, where's your next job? So it's, it's in Baltimore. It's like, you want to go there? <laughs> I said, yeah, I want to go there. <laughs> he said, that was, and I remember the last thing he said to me was, be careful. I was like, what, what do you think I'm going there to do? <laughs> Sell heroin? Like, what? no, it's a city, just like <laughs> every other city. Um, so, you know, you learned... Um, it's great. Yeah, you just learn to, you know, to, to support your own town. Like, I'll always be a Baltimore cheerleader, so no yeah, matter. And yeah, that's that's one of the things that um, that has been really big and really important for me and kind of how I've, like, directed some of my podcasting efforts. Like, you know, outside of this, I do a movie review show and I do, like, kind of this, this weird news pop culture show. And uh, over the years, it's like, I need to be a little bit more demonstratively, like, I'm a Baltimore guy. I'm a Baltimore guy. I'm a Baltimore guy because, uh, you know, back in like 2015, it was, uh, it was a part of a network and there were weird shots being thrown. And I was like, look, 
yeah. let's not do this. And then right. with, uh, you know, the response to, around like the Freddie Gray and then the fallout there and the, the response to it, it was even more vocal people that I was working with. And I was like, look, you're going to see some ugly Baltimore stuff come out and I'm going to be the person saying it to you right. guys. Like, don't take shots at my city. You like, you know where I'm from. Like, what are right. we doing? Right. And, and uh, I think that, yeah, I don't, and I think some people like they just um, they, they just decide that whatever narrative they may have seen on the wire or uh, the news feed or whatever is uh, a blanket statement of what the city is like. But I mean, you could do that with any city. You do it in San Francisco. You do it in L.A. I mean, name the most glamorous city. And I guarantee you, we can go to a neighborhood where stuff happens. Um, yes. I think that stuff happens in Baltimore. Like, I, I don't deny that. But I also will tell you that there is an art collective and there are these artists who are, who are wild. I'll tell you, there's a craft beer scene. There's, you know, yep. guys like Wendell Patrick who's turning out music like crazy. You got Aaron over there doing uh, No Picks After Dark and then Aaron Maven who's in schools helping young guys. I mean, I will go, I'll give you a, you know, encyclopedia full of uh, yeah. names of people who I think are doing well. And nobody talks about them outside the city, you know? And so I think that for guys like me and you, like telling their story, or at least bringing it up in those moments, um, I think are important. So if it's you doing it in a podcast or me doing it, you know, at O Doc 30 in the morning, I, I think that there's reason, you know, reason to do it. Totally. Absolutely. So I read an interview. Uh-oh. Uh, okay. Any I read an interview that anyone past or present, if you if you could uh, interview anyone past or present, <laughs> yeah. that it would be uh, Muhammad Ali. Is that true? And if it is, why? Okay, I have to alter the answer a little bit because that was at that okay. point. Yes, that was. Um, sure. But well, well, we'll say that. <laughs> I would still say yes to that. I think that uh, he combined everything possible: the athleticism. He was a showman. Uh, he was a smart dude, whether it was in the ring or just if you watch some old interviews with him, like way back, like, you know, um, even older than Johnny Carson show, whatever, like he knew how to command the room, but also he was this big muscular fighter that could just take you down. And then he saw everything. I mean, it was during the time of the civil rights and, and trying to figure out his way through um, whether he's a Muslim or not. And it just, you know, it was I think that he had so many layers um, that. It would be a fascinating interview, uh, pretty much yeah. endless. Um, now, the only reason I say I alter it because sure. I, uh, lately I've gotten big into you know thinking about family members of the past. That my grandfather yeah. was someone who I just admire. Just hearing his stories, adopted, grew up in Philly, came to Baltimore, made a life for himself. He was in the Navy and then uh, became an educator, teaching um, young enlisted black men um, uh, English, um, English yeah. as in you know teaching English classes, um, and. And stuff like that. I would love to sit back. And then he was a jokester and I only have a little inkling of it because he would pick me up from elementary school, but uh, a little past elementary school, he developed Parkinson's. And so, um, like he, uh, you know, our conversations changed over time. And then it got to a point sure. where I was, um, I'm trying to think of a good way of saying it. So it doesn't sound to belittle him. I was, uh, watching him, babysitting him for lack of a better word. And I was able to communicate to him, but he wasn't able to communicate to me. So I would have loved to, have, you know, share the jokes that I know that I say here way too much that I probably got from him or, you know, see what my father was like when he was my age or, you know, I'm sure he had some wisdom to impart that my older cousins were able um, yeah. to hear that I wasn't, you know? So I've, I've felt not cheated out of it, but I felt that's one of those things where, man, I wish, you know, we could sit down and, have a cup of coffee together. That, that's that's great. It's like you want to have the here's the the pie in the sky one. And yeah. Here's the one that is a little bit more personal that yeah. I think would be as rewarding, if not more. Oh, no yeah, doubt. I, I dig that. Yeah, no doubt. Um, yeah, you know, because you know, I think that um, you always want to preserve family stuff um, because you know, in some cases, once it's, if you didn't, once it's gone, it's gone. So um, yeah, I would love to do that. So we were talking a little bit before we got uh, got started with the actual recording here um, about uh, that morning situation, and nah, all right, all right, I can see that you're a morning person, obviously. Yeah. But um, well, tell me, tell me about some of those like daily routines um, that that you kind of engage in to kind of get things rocking and rolling, whether it be creative routines or like mm-hmm. otherwise. Like, look, I gotta yeah, sure. have you know coffee this way or whatever. Oh yeah. Coffee. No doubt. I mean, that's the only way the day's going to get started. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm, you know, I, I set two alarms cause I know I, I'm one day I'm going to miss one of them. So it goes, one goes off at two and I'm usually up for that one. And there's one that comes about five or six minutes after that, I, but I've never made it to that alarm in a long time. So I've been good at that. Um, you know, in the shower and out, and I even have an alarm to tell me when to get out of the shower. <laughs> uh, sometimes I hit that one. Sometimes I don't. 
Um, and then here by three. Um, and my routine is to read. I try to read every word that I'm going to say on television because I feel like if my brain hasn't touched it once and if I hadn't said it out loud at least once, I'm bound to screw it up. Now, do I still screw up? Of course I do. Uh, but <laughs> at least I give myself a shot not to. Um, <laughs> when we come in, producers have done largely all the writing. Um, and so I guess we're like a second set of eyes um, to sort of see our way through it. Um, I'll change things the way that I'll say it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I won't say that um, someone was extricated from a car. I'll say they'll pull up, you know, they'll pull out of the car or I won't say that someone fled. I'll say someone took off on foot or, you know, things like that. Or if there's cities um, or towns that, you know, I'll say differently. Or if you have inside knowledge about a school, um, second reference of city college to me will just be city because I know it is city, you know? Um, so I'll go through and find things like that. And then after that, some of my days are kind of boring, uh, setting up things for the show we do on Sunday and just, you know, making phone calls. But others are jam packed um, where yeah. we're doing interviews for that show. And then there may be a request from a public affairs office to do a PSA or something like that. So um, the days vary, but the good part of it is that they're all different. Um, yeah. I don't know if I could be, an accountant every day and run the same numbers or um, jobs like that. I think that I need, I like the variety of, it. and then you're surrounded by people who are um, just as crazy as you are. So <laughs> we all decided to get up at two o'clock in the morning. Um, and so I think that, that, that helps also. Um, so the timing is the same, but the content and the, the, the what makes up your day um, is different every time. Totally. Um, I have one more question before we get to these rapid fire ones. Okay, go ahead. We'll wrap. Okay. Um, so this is this is a this, this is a this is a thicker question. Okay. Um, so how how's your experience? How was your experience as a broadcast journalist during the Trump administration, and how has it changed since? That's, you know, people ask me that a lot, and um, it hasn't changed at all. I mean, I, you know, my job is to tell the story, so it doesn't matter what box I check, whether it's race, ethnicity, party affiliation, city I live in, whatever, I'm telling yeah. the story the same way. Um, so if, you know, if the dog barked twice, he barked twice, regardless of who the president was. Um, yeah, and yeah. so um, that's important to me. And I think our company makes it pretty apparent that, you know, we're doing things the same way we always did. Um, are there people that may turn you the wrong way because some of the things they say, or maybe it may affect um, people in your field. Of course it does. And of course, in the back of your mind, you may have certain feelings about it. But the moment I walk in this room, I get rid of a lot of them, except if it's the Ravens or Orioles. I'll, I'll you know, I make it known <laughs> that I prefer to see them win than lose or if it's city poly. Um, but no, I don't it, I don't care who's in office, man. If you're doing yeah. poorly, you're doing poorly. And we're going to tell the story about it. If you're doing well and things turn around, then we'll tell that story the same way. But um I don't think, at least I don't think so. And if someone has noticed differently, tell me, but I don't think I've treated any mayor or any um, politician or any teacher or whatever, um, any differently. Uh, my job stays my job. That's, that's legit. And I think, and it is a, an additional bullet point. I think um, an observation, I suppose, like WBA always kind of look like this is the trusted source. Like I, <laughs> I kind of shy away and from my own perspective. I kind of shy away from a lot of it because there are certain outlets that I was like, this is super biased. This is weird. Yeah, right. Right. And, and, and other ones it's like, Oh, okay. I can trust this one. This seems like fair and definitely keen in on some of the things that I actually am interested in. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's what I look for. I look for, for that trust. And it's kind of a, an echoing of a conversation I had with um, LaFontaine Oliver about WYPR and NPR. It's just like, what feels like this is trustworthy. This feels like this is legit. And I want to check further into it to learn a little bit more as opposed to this is how you should feel. We're right. in your seat and all of this different stuff. And it's like, right. Cause that's hard to do, man. Like why, you know, you know, I don't know. People don't want to know how to, how to feel. Maybe some people do want to, you to tell them how to feel, but that's not, yeah. that's not my job. You know, yesterday we ran a story about, um, what was it? Joe Rogan podcast. And all we did was mm -hmm. basically say what happened. Some artists decided they're not going to, uh, they want their stuff to be on, on Spotify anymore because of this podcast. That's it. And I immediately got an email from a guy, you liberal, blah, blah, blah. How could I <laughs> sick, sick of people like you because you're not, all I said was that people pulled their things off Spotify, but, um, but that's the climate that we're in now. So, you know, we, 
mm-hmm. you know, you just do your job and keep moving. <laughs> it, it, it's literally the old saying of just the facts, just the facts, man. <laughs> like that it's, whole thing. That's exactly what it is. Um, so as we wrap up here, I got a couple of rapid fire questions for you. Okay. And these don't, these don't um, require any extra context unless you really feel like you're like, oh, I need to say something with that. <laughs> All, right. All right. So here's the first one. Okay. Um, favorite German phrase. <laughs> so I feel Oscar like I did some little research. Though. Yeah, you did. Oscar Seichnick. That is excellent in German. Um, so because you're, you're, you're wearing the ties, you do the socks. What, what's your, what's your preference? Socks or ties? In, in terms of what I like the best? Uh, what is you like? What, what, yeah, what you like the best, yeah. Oh, Todd. Um, What is your current golf handicap? <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm trolling a little bit now. <laughs> you really are. <laughs> it, you know, I've never even calculated because I'm that bad. My handicap is that I have <laughs> zero gain, if you want to know what the like. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll calculate that. We'll, we'll put together a query and, and figure that out. Um, favorite Joe Williams song? Oh man! Every day I had the blues. Okay, good. Yeah. good. Um, got got two more here. Okay, One I just ahead. added because I think it's funny. Um, thin crust or deep dish? Oh, thin crust. Okay, good man, good man. <laughs> uh, lastly, um, because you were talking about it, uh, your <laughs> your your whole your whole sleep situation was kind of like rabbit holed out. What was your last um Google search? <laughs> My last Google search. <laughs> Let me throw it away because I think it's a. Oh, I know. My la- I'll tell you what my last Google search was was how to activate my Apple ID because we just started a podcast of our own and I could not get it to upload onto uh, Apple Podcasts. It said that I activate it. I've had an Apple ID for like 10 years. I dig it. I, I dig it. <laughs> um, so that's pretty much all I have, but I want to offer up the uh, opportunity and invite you to um, tell the fine folks where to find you at online. Yeah, man. I mean, we, uh, every morning, if you want to find us, we are we broadcast live on our website. It's WBALTV.com. Uh, There's a little link there. You can sit there and, and watch us. Also, Twitter and Instagram. I think one of them is at JN Newt WBAL. I'm on there. And another one is Jason underscore Newt 11. I think that's uh, Instagram. We have a lot of fun there. I've, you know, I've moved away from doing the headlines, which I thought no one looked at. And so now we just, you know, today I was talking about the floor director's shoes and, uh, you know, we just have, it's, I think it's a fun spot to get away from headlines that I think, um, uh, can just <laughs> drive you down, uh, into a hole. And so, uh, we have a lot of fun there. So if people are looking for things to see behind the scenes or they can see the WBAL TV puppy Tucker, um, there's that too. So, um, yeah, if you want to, if you want to move from 13 or two, 45, <laughs> I can't tell you what to do, but I mean, 11 dash one is not a bad place to land, man. <laughs> That's great. So for, um, I'll wrap up there. So for, um, for Jason Newton of WBAL channel 11, check it out folks. I'm Rob Lee saying that there is like news coverage, conversation in and around Baltimore. You just got to look for it. 